being on black, folks, and basically the sunspots have calmed down pretty good. But uh, we have been seeing some objects blinking in on behind and so forth and so on. Uh, number one thing is that our polar angle has been locked here for quite a while, right on the red. We're just getting in the red, and it's been hanging out there for quite a long time. It's been pretty solid for a long time, which is very unusual. Okay, it usually doesn't stay locked in like that for a heck of a long time. Now, if you don't think ionospheric electrons cause earthquakes and uh, the sun is electrical, then why are you so hot, Australia? And you know it, okay? So basically, yes, electrons and the sun is very electric. Now, I can't tell when this is going to get right back over top of Australia and everything like that, but enjoy the little bit of pull-off you've got right now, but yep, you get, you'll get you get some more heat. This will keep around. And basically, that's electricity, electrons, okay? And there's your chart. Very heavy, right out of there, okay? So... And we always know about Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, and Australia's heat problem right now, basically, and the earthquakes. Now, the jet stream is very weird, and I've even talked to some pilots privately, and basically they were, they were interested. It's like, what do you, how do you know that, that there's been very unusual with the jet stream, okay? And that's in knots, this here is. So, uh, basically, I just told them I watched the weather, okay? I'm a weather observer, okay? So jet streams is very unusual. You can look up history of jet streams, and this is very unusual, what we're getting. And it's basically Fuka fudge. Okay, so then we go on, and then I can basically just delete stuff and just keep on recording. We'll just keep going through data, and there's your coolness, okay? Now, that one I did show you that one day, it did heat up. Basically, we had a triangulation of a couple spots in Colorado, and then a heat spot up here. But as you see now, it's cold all over, minuses, okay? So we get quick fluctuations on our weather. And as you see that we have here, that that's a moisture, okay? That's moisture in clouds. So basically the southeast is going to get some rain. So then that's very an awesome anomaly that we get seeing here with this moisture. It's like a giant moisture tornado, okay? So anyway, very awe-strucking. And we'll keep going through this. The magnetical pole shift is very very prominent because the idea that we're going to have something funky happen because if idea if we're going to get anything close to this vector again you see how we got two squares that we're going to end up having to meet up with between now and January 1st and it's not we know there's going to be a difference you can see the discrepancy is usually about 50 late of recent now the path of our orbits with our magneticals pretty much stays the same if you watch these and go through the years and compare we got 2011 line and in 2012 and I'll zoom up a little bit, and you'll start seeing the squares. And the number one thing is, as you can see, the vector that we're going to be even getting close with is we're almost tied with what January would be, and we're two vector boxes, a complete minus of 100 away, okay? And it doesn't matter if you call it a plus or a minus. When we get done with January 1st, we're going to be something like over here, okay? So even if we get lucky, we're going to be, pfft, no matter what, at least a good 50 off which would be normal somewhat and then so I kind of predict that basically that's going to end up somewhere along this line just below it or here between January of 2013 okay so we might just get to here and then we're going to have an, pretty much a matching code to keep on watching the quakes and everything if we end up just here okay so Something to watch out for. So, and then we're going to go in some data. And this ain't going to look too awful strange. It pretty much is because you see how it crossed. Anybody that watches this data for a long time would notice that. Now, there's not much up on the CN. Uh, we're staying really, the sun's pretty quiet as far as coronal mass ejections right now, okay? And the sun spots are really low and quiet too. And we're getting some wild electrical. Uh, you're, this is basically stuff to take note, pay, take pictures of this. You ever see these graphs like this again, and we have a lot of solar flares and spots on the sun? And you got something really to worry about. Or at least that would be another anomaly, like this is an anomaly. And then basically, proton action, this was a wild spike, historical. Okay, and we're getting back to normal at least a little bit, but at the same time, this is very strange too here, just as strange as this. And if we keep getting this and this, then we really got some 
Something's going to happen. Earthquake, something. This is all solar weather, and we always get it down here to Earth. We're calming down and getting somewhat normal, but this needs to get down here, and this could stay there or up here somewhere, but this needs to spread back the flip out. So, as you've seen, we can get this, <clears throat> this pretty much matches up in the electrons. So, and then the cross phasing is coming down, but still cross phased. They're separating out a little bit. It'd be like nice here. Everything can get back in its normal. You know, they might have to adjust the graphs if this stays for a long time. Hopefully, it'll get back to norm. This is very stunning. Okay, so that's why I made a video because basically there's so much. In IE, you want to thank somebody, and I don't really drop names. So basically, GD358. You basically need to keep, and it's basically Hercules V777. Okay, and it's better known as HER777. So I don't know if I left that out of the list that I gave of the fast rotating stars. And as you can see here. So it's basically a white dwarf and it's very fast and it's helium star. Okay. So it has a non-radial gravity wave. Okay. So it's very interesting. So quit t talking about a proton belt and start talking about basically stars. Other stronger stars would be the only thing that would ever bother. Uh, but the one thing that actually factual is gamma rays and then what we are getting from out. And remember, uh, I am I could be right or wrong, but I think that the sun is a hydrogen star. So anyway, the NASA's got something to retract. If it's just a hydrogen star and if the sun is, is a helium star, then we got some because basically they have a video on their site that's backwards, okay? And I don't know if they know that or not. But I could be backwards, but vice versa, NASA's got something wrong. It's because no matter what, if you want to call it a gamma ray <coughs> or a quasar ray, uh, photon belt, no, photon belt it does not have any description in astronomy yet that I know of, okay? Star belts, uh, oh, I mentioned it when I was talking in my talk group, uh, Star belts and uh, oh, what other belts is there? So anyway, you can see it in the left-hand corner here in case it gets screwed up on the player. But now nah, there you go. I got blew it up, and as you can see, I got it froze there, and I'm not going to try to hit play. And as you can see, the, the basically the big streak to the left that's basically almost, and it's come from from way the hell out in space somewhere. So we're getting tons of electrical energy and energy waves bigger than the sun that are flying around up there and watch my last few videos to check that stuff out. Just a lot of actual factual data that's going on in space weather right now. So we're not under solar maximum. They say that because we're not in X-class flares. But the sun is very calm and we're getting some very wild graph action. So basically we are on a weather page turn of data and the sun is, the spots are calming down. It wasn't supposed to be solar maximum, so what have we gotten? And now we'll watch to see if we get any more CMEs, which has calmed down into the B phases and so forth and so on, which is good, but we're still getting some wild electrical action from the sun, and also massive things larger than the sun, way the hell out in space, as i.e. you can see this. That's not anything messing with the picture. That's right there from JP's L's solar front SFL. R registered there, da -da, taxpayers' dollars, ladies and gentlemen. You own it. We're just sharing the news. Okay? So, anyway, I'm just going to plop this up. A lot of data and facts. See if I come up with anything else I might add to it. Now, I could be wrong, but basically, I know the, the sun to be a hydrogen star. Now, NASA's got a video they're going to have to pull down because basically they're educating the young kids that the sun's a helium star, which is not that I know of. And it's basically universe abundance, and we've got the, one of the rarest stars in the in the universe. Then, because in the abundance in the universe, 75th, 75 percent, the number one ranking of stars in the universe are hydrogen stars, because that's why we have electricity coming from it. Okay, so are they trying to hide the fact that you can get free electricity off the sun? Well, that's quite possible. That's not my problem. Tesla lived and Tesla knew what he knew. Okay? Now, all I know is NASA's got a video that I'm going to ass gaff the hell out of. Okay? So, basically, if you want to prove that the sun is a helium star, then let me know. Because I'd like to know. Because I don't, I've always been taught that it's a hydrogen star. And you got a video on NASA's site, i.e., that's why I was giving you the example of this other star being a 
Helium Star because I knew about it and I apologize if I left it off the list. Fast rotating and very, very hot. Okay, 19,000 K. Okay, so basically uh, we've had a lot of heat records this year and this is a Helium Star. Okay, the sun's not. Okay, so if the sun was a Helium Star, I don't think life would have ever even started on Earth. So, anyway, because the sun doesn't have a helium atmosphere, okay? White dwarfs do, okay? So, there's a possibility, because basically the sun's supposed to turn in to a... Not a hydrogen. It's supposed to turn into a white dwarf, possibly end up with a helium atmosphere someday, okay? So, NASA's got a goofy-ass video on their site, and kids watch it and see it, and they get taught the wrong actual factual, because it would totally screw their scientists and make them look like a fool if they talk to anybody about physics or the sun. So, so here's our current sun configuration and the moon. And yes, the moon cools us off if we get too hot, so... Australia might get a little bit more cooler the next time the moon comes around. Block a little bit more of the heat. I've shown you all the electrons they was getting, and basically, yes, the sun will end up being a white dwarf someday, but it's far from that right now, okay? It's basically a hydrogen star. Oxen, carbogen, carbon, excuse me, and oxygen. See? That's what we'll end up at, at, but then that turns into helium, and that'd be a white dwarf, okay? Since we have oxygen now, the sun does, and it is carbon. It's a hydrogen star. Okay? So, so i.e. the angle of the Earth, okay? I, the, I keep on showing you that we're in the red on our angle, of our dangle, yes. Magnetics, the sun, and heat. And that's why we've been getting so many doggone heat records because basically we keep going into the red on our polar angle, you see? And then that's why the North Pole is melting and that's why basically then you know all this crap that they've been making out, that the idea that it's all from man messing up, making the Earth be so damn hot, it's all angles, okay? It's space weather, okay? And the sun is not a white dwarf yet, okay? Millions and billions of years, okay? Basically, maybe another 8 to 10 billion years from now, okay? And if I'm wrong, it won't be a white dwarf while you're alive, okay? If you've seen this video, it won't be a white dwarf while you're alive. And how I know that everything's okay with the sun is basically, I always look at my nice signature that I can always get. And we're going to look up at it, and it's something you can always pretty much see. Now, yes, the, the sun is a magnet, okay? So as you can see, there's tons of stuff that's getting, that's huger than Jupiter. All this stuff is huger than Jupiter, and it gets clung to it. It's stuck in an orbit around by the sun. And basically, somebody might even actually someday think that there's actually a theory that it uses it for fuel, but that's actually totally false, okay? That's pretty much been proven by physics and everything that we know about stars. If we didn't do the... Uh, Basically, the uh, the Hubble telescope helped us with that. Okay, so we're going to blow in on this. This is something that basically is always up there ahead of the sun. It's part of the uh, umbilical cord. So as you see that there, and then basically what I want to do is get back down over here. There's our remnant we know very much about. That we've seen plenty of that. I've showed you plenty of that. And we're going to go back over to the left here real fast. If I can get down here fast enough and then move the sidebar over and see what we got. We have some very interesting stuff over here, the lower left of the sun billions and trillions of miles away, okay, nothing to worry about, but it's interesting how the kind of V formation that, that it has, and those are planets, they're not UFOs, ladies and gentlemen, my god, I can't believe I actually said that stupid ass word, but anyway, if it's flying object, JPL knows what it is, they can nail it down real fast, what the hell something is, okay, so as we go back up here above the sun or anything like that, and we'll move right above the sun, and you're going to see a huge ass flipping star our way the hell out somewhere, because basically that's there, as you get see, getting caught and flashing, and that's today's date, let me go, bam, bump, bump, get out of here, and bang, and there you go, and there's the latest from Navy there, because basically, I can go back real fast, show how much you're blocking, this is how much you're blocking, a lot of stuff I just showed you. 
out.